Australia's top scientists have convened in Canberra for the Australian Academy of Sciences annual celebration. It's known as Science at the Shine Dome and 21 high achievers are speaking about their groundbreaking research. The event goes for three days. One of those is Professor Linda Richards who's looking into wiring the brain. To tell us more, she joins us now from Canberra. Uh, Professor, thank you for, for joining us on the program. Firstly, tell us about this symposium. It's an annual gathering of some of the country's top scientists. That's right. Um, the Australian Academy elects 20 to 22 uh, new fellows every year. So these are eminent scientists that have been elected to the Academy based on their discoveries. Okay, so Professor, you're talking about how the brain can be wired. We, we hear a lot about the wiring that's so essential in the early stages of an infant's life, uh, how they're loved, how they're hugged, how they're communicated with. You talk about it in terms of function. What do you mean by function? Well, uh, what I mean by function is all of the remarkable things that the brain does, storing memories, planning for the future, even controlling our uh, internal organs. The brain is, is responsible for all of those things, our mathematical abilities, our um, uh, abilities in the arts, um, our ability to think and, um, and plan for the future, really. So that's what I mean by function. Uh, yeah, so, so how much of that is deliberate? I mean, how much can you deliberately wire the brain and how much of it just comes from just being? Right, so there's basically um, two sorts of mechanisms involved. There's obviously a genetic um, component. Uh, the genes are, are regulating molecules within the cellular environment as the brain is developing. And this is largely occurring uh, prior to birth. The, these molecules are expressed and uh, are controlling how the, um, the electrically, uh, electrically excitable cells in the brain called neurons are wired together. And then after the, um, the baby is born uh, and uh, starts to interact with its environment, then uh, the sensory inputs into the brain uh, as, as the child is learning new things also has a significant impact in how the brain is wired. Okay, so your research, I believe, is sort of informative stage, is the area of your research at the moment. Can you explain for us how you're pushing this whole dialogue ahead? Yes, yeah, so I um, study uh, one of the largest fibre tracks in the brain. It's called the corpus callosum, and it connects uh, the two uh, hemispheres of the brain together. And there are a number of... Um, uh, human congenital conditions where this um, structure fails to form. It's associated with over 300 congenital syndromes and its incidence is at, uh, one in 3,000 people. So um, we're very interested in the, the mechanisms, both those genetic and molecular mechanisms, but also the, um, the environmental influences that can establish the correct wiring of the brain. And um, when I talk about brain wiring, I'm talking about the connections between the neurons, both at a very um, micron level in terms of the synapses, but also the long range wiring of the brain. And that, that's really where my research has focused. When you say correct wiring, is there a way in which the brain should be wired and functions at its best when it is and of course then you have to think about brain injury, uh, deterioration of that brain over time, a trauma perhaps over time as well. Um, so can wiring be unwired? Right, so what we're discovering in um, studying people with corpus callosum malformations is that this long-range axonal wiring, so these are the major connections between long-range projections between different parts of the brain, can actually uh, adapt during brain development to rewire the brain when, when a structure like the corpus callosum can't form. Now, what we're trying to do is to understand how that's related to the cognitive abilities of that person. So both the sort of genetic and molecular mechanisms that led to that unusual wiring, but then also how does that wiring actually relate to the abilities of that person? Okay, Professor Linda Richards, fascinating research. Thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you very much for having me.